I'm Arno from ThinkCell, and uh, ThinkCell is making a really fancy PowerPoint add-in. Uh, we reverse engineer PowerPoint and deeply integrate into it and, and hack around in it and, and uh, want to do automatic slide layout. Anyway, so what I'm going to talk about today is, is something that we encountered in our, our library. Um, the library is, is on GitHub uh, for anyone to use. Um, and that's one aspect that we found which was kind of, was kind of interesting. Um, and and we, we worked around it. We, we actually um, took care of that in our library. Now, um, we all know iterators, right? So they've been with us since the Stone Age. Um, and I think the initial idea was it's kind of like a pointer. So it, it's, it's, it behaves like a pointer. It's pointing at something, and you can move it forward and backward. And, and then there's this special thing that it's end. But, but essentially, it was the idea is you don't go too far away from a pointer. Um, now, what's interesting is that iterators can really be do two different things. Uh, you have a vector, and you do a min element. Now, it's pretty clear this min element says something about an element in the vector. It doesn't, so, so one of these elements is, is the minimum. Now, in contrast to talking about borders between elements. So upper bound says something about, OK, this is the end of the range of zeros, and now and something else starts. And this is a border we're talking about. And there is this convention that iterators are always pointing at the element after the border. But we kind of do both in this, we, we, we both use the same thing for both. We both uh, use iterators for both uh, borders and elements. Now, and then now we have ranges. And ranges are really anything that has iterators. So anything that you can get begin from and end from, and then you run an iterator over it to iterate all the elements. Now, they could either be containers, vector lists, sets. They own the elements. Uh, they do deep copy uh, in, in O of n. And they have deep constants. And of course, now they could also be views. Now, views are really, um, well, they, they, they are they reference elements. They don't own them. They have shallow copy. Uh, that means also it, it should work in O of 1 to copy them. And they have shallow constants. Now, really, these views were already in the standard before. They were just came in the disguise of an iterator pair. And we just basically removed that iterator pair and said, OK, now we put this into one object. And we call that a, a, a view. And, and now we pass views to, to most algorithms. And, and we have in the standard the subrange, which is exactly that. It's a pair of iterators. OK. Um, now, why do we do this? Well, um, it makes for more compact code. So you have this, this the, in the beginning here. This is uh, what, you ha what you would have to write if you don't have views or ranges. So you'd have to mention begin and end each time you pass something into an algorithm. You do this for sort. You do this for unique, begin and end. And then for erase, you do this again with the end. With arranges, it becomes a bit more compact. You can just say, OK, sort, and then unique, and every time you just pass in the vector, and you don't have to mention begin and end, which is nice. And these two algorithms have a bug. They're really wrong. What's the bug? Anyone see the bug? Why don't you want to write this th that way? And it actually fell on our feet. We had this problem. What's using, what, what is sort using for sorting? The less operator. What's unique using for uniquing? The equal operator. These two things should better be implemented correctly and, and, and compatibly. And it's probably an unnecessary requirement. Probably what you want to do if you want to remove duplicate elements, if you want to essentially rely on the less operator, you don't need the equality. You could just give it any predicate that's a less operator. And uh, with things are ranges with a range library, you can just write sort unique in place. And that does everything fancy. You can also pass a predicate. And then it gets, just gets turned around to put into the unique. So you never make this mistake. Anyway. Here we just do a simple find on, on a range. Um, you have a vector, 0, 0, 1, 1. And we will use that like, throughout the talk. Um, and you do a find. And you look for the first element that is a 0. OK. 
Now let's say you have enriched the vector a little bit. You don't just have zeros and ones in there, but in addition, you also have a character. And you store that as a pair inside the vector. Now, if you want to search for the zeros in that vector, you have to write the, write the find if. Now, which is kind of strange, right? Because clearly, here we're looking for zeros, there we are looking for zeros, but if you're looking at how we write it, it has nothing to do with each other. We use a completely different technique. That's a bit strange. And the problem here really is that this projection that we are talking about the numbers, the, the first element of our pair, and what we're doing, looking for zeros, that we've lumped this, this together here in this one lambda that we are passing in. Now, we don't have to do that. Come in the transform adapter. Um, so here, you would, instead of doing it the old-fashioned way with a find if, you could separate the projection and the search. So first, you create a transformed view. And then you find on this view with your, the same old find function that we used on the original vector that only zeros or ones. The vector doesn't get modified. Um, and the trans is, of course, referencing the vector. And all the transformations, this projection that's happening is all happening lazily. So only when, it gets the, the, when the, um, the iterator gets dereferenced, then we actually do the projection. So it's all old stuff that's already in ranges. OK. Now, let's say we want to get to the corresponding, to the corresponding um, character. right? So if you write it in the old-fashioned way, you can just say, arrow second, and you get the character that's associated with it. Let's try that with a transform. So does this work? No. OK. Of course, it doesn't work because the iterator is pointing to ints. And you have to kind of peel off this transform to get the iterator back that is pointing to pairs. So that's what we're doing here. We had here the iterator pointing at our transform 0, 0, 1, 1. And then we call dot base on the iterator to get an iterator on the corresponding element in the original vector. And then on that vector, on that, on that corresponding vector uh, iterator, after we call base, we can call second, and everything is good. Now, range is find certainly returns iterators in the role of an element because the finding you do, the equality, is a property of the element. So you're returning an element. So the base that you're calling on the iterator should better preserve the identity of that element. So you are pointing here at this first zero. And when you call base, you should still call, point at the first element in that, in that original vector. It seems like, yeah, of course, Arno. I mean, why, what are we talking about, right? Of course, that has to be like that. OK. Well, let's try this with upper bound. Uh, so we do the same thing. We still have our original vector, and we, we transformed it. And now we do upper bound 0. And upper bound certainly returns a border. It's the end of the equal range of zeros right here. And next expressed as an iterator pointing at the 1. And all looks good. If you call base, you get an iterator that's pointing at the 1a here. And it so happens that if you interpret this as a border, you get just the border between the 0 and 1s. So everything is good. OK, let's keep playing that game. Let's have look at the filter adapter. Um, here we filtered that original range for all the Bs in the second element. And then we play the same game. We transform again on the first, and we do the find 0. So here's what we get. We have first a, we fi find the 0 on the 0, 1, because we filtered the A's out. Then we, we peel off the transformation, 0B and 1B, with the first base on the transform. And then we do base on the filter, which preserves, again, the, the, the element, 0B, here. But what's interesting here is the results that you would get if you had run this algorithm on the unfiltered range 
would be this, this element, right? This one would be the zero. So the result would be different without the filter. You're not really undoing the effect of the filter. So you could ask, well, is that OK? Well, I would argue, yes, it's OK. Because you really, what you did here, you picked an element. And when you do base, you just preserve this element. And then it's fine to point at that one, because in the original range that we filtered, that was the element that we were finding. So, OK. Now maybe that you see what's, gonna, what's, gonna, what's coming now. Um, we do this on the upper bound. OK, so now we have an iterator pointing to the 1. But really, what that means is a border between the 0 and 1. Now we do base on it. And so far, so good. We are still having a border between the 0 and the 1s. And then again, we do base. And now it becomes interesting. Because really, what the upper bound said is, I'm going to give you a border between this element and that element. But the filter actually filtered out the 1a. So we don't really know what's going to be the right return here, if this is in the, in the, in the, in the role of, of a border. right? Should it be here? Should it be there? It's, it's not clear, because it's never, it's never been specified. We're talking about a border of two elements here. So it's ambiguous what base should return. But still, it lets you return it. It lets you call it. So I don't know if you're getting to this, but I'm wondering why you're using a Pantone view rather than a projection in the range function. Because, because I want to. Because I want to. Because it's just the, the algorithm that we are looking at. Okay. So um, I mean, it, it should work, right? I think I'm, what, I'm, what I'm getting at here is what is the semantics of what we are doing. Right. But passing and, the projection in allows you to get back the iterator to the original range. That you have to do the base business. Right, but the base business is part of the standard. You, you can do the base but business. So and maybe it's, it's, maybe it's like you know, you're doing the work somewhere else. Maybe you're calling a function. And, and you could add a projection to every function you call. But you know, maybe you, you do a transform, and then you know another filter, and another filter, and another transform. So you stack these things on top of each other. And, and keeping track of the right projection is, is maybe tedious. If you, what, you, what you semantically want to stick into the function is, say, an, a, a range of ints. And, and that's, that's what the function is semantically expecting. And then you have to continue with the. Oh, yeah, sorry. The, um, so, so why don't we use projections was the question. Um, why don't we use projections? And the answer was because I think the, you should be able to use these ranges. Um, the, the, the function that you're sticking the range into may not know that you want to do a projection. That's some, something that takes place in the caller. The caller makes a projection, and then you stick it into an algorithm. And the algorithm should care less if, if you, you did a projection or not. It's, if for them, it's just, a, or for the, for the called algorithm, maybe just a, a sequence of, of ints. Okay. Hi. Um, so I, uh, I apologize for missing the beginning. So I may have lost the, the context that, that explains this. But it seems to me that what you just said is, is I, have a, I have a right to interpret this, this position as someplace in the base that I, I guess what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, to me, I don't, I don't understand why you say it's, it's ambiguous because the way I figure out what border a thing is pointing at is, I say which element is it? It's the border just before that element. Right. And as long as there's a procedure for that, the whole thing. Uh, okay. I mean. Um, so the question here was, uh, uh, why is this ambiguous? I mean, we are talking about iterators, and effectively the argument is iterators behave the way iterators do, and what you're getting is well defined. So, so what's your problem? Is that a rough, uh, I'll roughly? I'll summarize it that way. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's okay. Problem? What's your problem? <laughs> um, so uh, my problem is that that I, th you, you, as a programmer, you think about iterators in either element, as, as an element that's pointing at something, and we are talking about a, about a property of a particular element, or we are really talking about a border. We are talking about a division between elements. And, and we do this both in the, in, the, in the same way, using an iterator. 
And if you, if you know the semantics here, that, that this, this upper bound is a border between the 0 and 1, then in an ideal world, the, this essentially wouldn't compile. It would tell you what you were asking here is it, what you're asking for is something at least weird. You, you, you didn't quite, you, if, you, if this is really a border between the 0 or 1, and then at the end you, you insert elements somewhere, then what kind of answer do you expect? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I need to rephrase my question because what I'm, what I'm saying is it sounds like you think you have your right to this mental model of, of an iterator is either an element position or a border, and, and that the borders have identity and I can, you know, but that's, that's your, it's a wrong mental model for, so, okay, I, you want to have that mental model? Maybe you have a, an abstraction that, that, that you can sell us that, that, you know, vents that mental model, but I don't see a problem yet. <laughs> I don't see, okay. I, don't see um, I, I, I guess your argument is, um, it, 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 I mean, iterators behave as iterators behave. So it, you, you shouldn't expect anything else out of, out of an iterator than what an iterator does. I guess, uh, yeah. um, and, and, and my counter argument would be, yes, that's right. I mean, knowing iterators, I can agree with that. But very practically, in a program, in my mind, as a programmer, I am making a distinction between borders and elements. And, and later on, actually, I went through our code and, and looked whether I can make that distinction in the code. And I can. It's, it's, the, the distinction is very clear that at every point, what do we have here? And, and, and so you could say, well, iterators are all fine. OK. But then iterators don't really address our problem. They're not the language that I, am, I want to speak when I'm writing my program. Got it. So that, that's, that, that's really my problem. I mean, of course, you can, you can specify anything in any way you like it. I mean, we already had it yesterday. How do you get a program that's always correct? You never write a documentation, right? So you can always write a documentation or iterators that iterators behave like iterators behave, and then iterators are correct. Uh, correct. I mean, the, the question is, are they helpful for us as a programmer? And, and there, I, I, I think I have questions. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I guess um, the problem you're saying with the interpreting iterators of uh, borders or elements, and I don't think the, the problem really with iterators. I think the, um, you, you could replace uh, all that, and apologize, I'm not uh, as deep C++ person, so uh, I, I come from a different perspective. But let's say Maybe that's uh, good. All, all these things we turn indices, and now you have just the index in the vector. Right. What I think is the problem is that you don't have the right to say that base is returning the, um, the uh, a border in the in the base uh, vector that you have. So the way you, you can interpret what base is is not the same when you have the projected or filtered version. Once you have something filtered, what are the indices of the base are no longer the same, uh, uh, no longer have the same meaning for uh, if they are viewed as borders for the base vector. They, are, they do have the same meaning for representing an element, but that's a coincidence. So, so, the, so, so I, I see whether I can repeat your question. So your, or your, your comment. Um, wait, um, you, you essentially, you said, I have no right to interpret the, the, the iterator base for a border as a, a valid border. In my, in my base range. While for elements, I maybe have that right. Yeah, but it's a coincidence. But it's a coincidence. Well, it's a well coincidence. actually, I'm not quite sure. That, so, so this is my answer. I'm not quite sure it's a coincidence. Um, I mean, coincidences are not very practical in, in programming. What you want is semantics. You want to have, you know, if you, are, you, are, you have an element, there, there is the, 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 the question for elements is very well posed, or the, the, the problem. You have the, when, we are, when we are pointing at this element, and we're talking about the element, not the border, then it's clear what the original element should be. I mean, we did a filter. We filtered out all the A's. So it's not going to be one of the A's. It's going to be one of the B's. And the original, the corresponding element, is clearly this one in the vector. There's just no debate about it. For, for the sake of, of, the, um, uh, of the, the discussion, let's assume that base returns 
a different type every time you do a transform. Now you have a complete different set of types that are not compatible whatsoever. And what I'm claiming is that that should be the model you have in mind, and it's a coincidence that the, the you can use, uh, there is an intersection of the types of the base of the filter version and uh, Maybe we continue a little bit with the talk because I think this is these. I mean, these are the questions that we are now going to be hunting. I mean, what should we do? I mean, that's exactly what we want to explore in the talk. So I think this is kind of a wrong idea because the, you know you're saying basically it works by accident, and if it works at all, it works by accident. The, should, the standard shouldn't give you things that aren't supposed to work at all and sometimes work by accident. No, no I'm, I'm not saying it, it's it by accident. I'm saying the model we use to think about that is not the correct model. We should think that the indices that you get from the filter vector are not the same indices, or I, I mean, uh, but then they shouldn't compile not at all. the same iterators are. So, uh, so should the type be the same of, of whatever you're returning with base base? My argument is yes, of course it should be the same. I mean, if we are talking about this element here, it's, it would be very strange if this would be described in any other way than with an iterator into that vector. I mean, that's what we have. Semantically, it's, it's this element. And this element is described by an iterator. So if you're, getting, if you're doing base space and you get an iterator, uh, it could get an element. That's the way to describe it. You don't want to have a different type for it that's incompatible with all the other iterators. No. Okay, let's 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 keep let's keep going a little bit, and then and then maybe then maybe we are getting somewhere. Okay. All right. Um, so your your answer. Is, okay. So then don't call do don't do this. Right. Know about it's a bit little bit like okay. Don't expect from an iterator what you shouldn't expect. Right. I mean it's your fault. Right. You can make that argument. Okay. Let's look at reverse. Um, and play the same game. Now we have the tree again. Um, here's the reversed view, and we have a transform, and we again get the first out, and then we do find, which is give you, giving you an, the identity of an element. And that's this one. And in, when you take the transform out, it's this one. And then when you do the undo the reverse, it's this one. Very clearly. Okay. Let's do the lower bound. Now we're looking zero. It's this one. It's this one. Now which one should it be here? That one. Right? And so base has to preserve the identity of the element and also to preserve the identity of the border. And in case of reverse, it cannot do both. So it, this is a strange function. So. Now, let's see how big the problem is. Okay? Now, we, I gave you an individual example. Like, what's the, what's the principle here? What's, what, what, where, are thing, where are things going wrong? Under which circumstances are things going wrong? I'm sorry. I don't want to slow you down, but my memory is that, that for a reverse iterator, base always refers to a different element. It, it does, but it, it doesn't. Not, it, that's why it does not preserve the identity. It doesn't preserve the identity. So it, it does do this. It does, I see. it does do this. It doesn't do this. Yeah. Okay, it, but it should do this. Yeah. 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 A and this, <laughs> depending on depending on what, what kind of usage you have, it depends on the case. I can, I can. So now, no, because sometimes. So I'll give you the. I, I, I'll give you the example. It doesn't work for. It doesn't work for either one. They, they don't work for borders all the time, and they don't work for elements all the time. So um, first of all, let's look at what's the problem with reverse iterator. Okay, before we go go further. Um, so of course, incrementing the reverse iterator, the underlying iterator gets decremented. Decrementing the reverse iterator, the underlying iterator gets incremented. The dereference operator returns dereference of the iterator minus one. Well, why does it have to do that? It has to do that because the iterator at begin stores end, but you can very rightfully dereference begin, and then it has to return the last elements of your sequence, which is end minus one. So that, that works. The iterator at end, on the other hand, st stores begin, but end is never being dereferenced. So everything is fine because 
if you decrement the iterator to n minus 1, then again, you're getting with it minus 1 the, 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 um, the correct result because the, uh, the n minus 1, underly the underlying iterator of n minus 1 is base begin plus 1. And base begin plus 1 minus 1 is again base begin, and they can dereference de 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 it, and you get the right result. So that's basically the reverse adapter. OK, now. And the element after the border in reverse sequence is the element before the border in the original sequence. So now, let's talk about the scope of the problem. When do we mess up? Now, any adapter that is going to change the order of elements, there it's going to be OK to do the base of an element. The element is still going to be in the original sequence, so you can point to it. Now, the base of the border makes no sense because we've jumbled up all the iterators, they are, all the elements, they are all in a different order now. So any division between two, two elements is no longer valid in, in, the sorted, in, in the resorted sequence. So if you had a sort adapter, this would apply. The reverse adapter is really a special case uh, of these things because everything changes sides. So the base of the border is well-defined, but it's different from the base of the element. Okay. Now, let's see, when we are removing elements by an adapter, uh, and that's, that's the filter case, okay, then the elements may collapse into, a into the border, essentially, and then the base of the elements is well-defined, but the base of the border is ambiguous. And this is, would be the case for, as we've seen, the filter, but also like sorted intersection if you, if you do it on, on one, of the, one of the ranges, sorted difference and so forth. Okay, now, you can also have the reverse. What if the adapter adds elements? Now, if we add elements, then, then there are elements appearing that are not present in base. Now here, it's just reverse. The base of the border is well-defined, and the base of the element in general is undefined um, because the border, the element may be gone. It may not be in the original sequence. But the border is. You could still say, oh, OK, it's, it's dividing the A into D. So somewhere in here. OK, so sorted union. Um, one example, if you go to one branch. Okay. So, what do we do? An easy fix would be, we say, well, base comes really in two flavors. We really want a border base and an element base. And the border base and the element base are only implemented if they make sense and they do the right thing for borders and elements. Okay, that's, that, that's a fix. Um, I think I want to go a step further. I think I want to separate the concepts border and element. Now, yes, we have a big change. There's no more iterator um, in, in user code. It should, be, it should be explicit whether you're talking about a border or an element. And then automatically base would do the right thing because it knows whether it's a border or an element. Now, of course, the question is, do iterators are really borders and elements? And this is, I think, a, a question you have to ask by looking at code. You have to basically, this is, you, you have to test it against, 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 against actual code. See, is this semantics? Can you look at a piece of code and say, this is a border, this is an element, this is a border. If you cannot do that, then, then that, that's unworkable. So I did that uh, on one million lines of code in our code base. And here's what the result. Yes, they do. I, I categorize them. So if you do a find, um, there, are, there are 201 cases where, expect the, where we expect the find to find a single element. So it's not, it's not finding the first element. We're finding a single element. And we have this annotated in our code. That, that's why I know that. Uh, we, we assert, essentially. And interestingly, they are all the element role, but there are, there are two exceptions. One is, one is border roll, which is essentially, it's kind of like a trim, right? Trim before the first element, and the element only exists once. But one time, it's also incremented to get the border after it. So this is, this is nice and symmetric. It's like there's no preference for it to mean the border before. Just as often it means the border after. I'm doing the find to get the border after. So it's, it's expressed differently. We have to increment the iterator, but semantically in the program, there's, there's no preference for these two. 
Now, if you're finding the first match, there it's easy to imagine that this would be more border heavy because it's, it's kind of a trim. You're, you're going through the, the sequence of elements of in, 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 uh, in, your, in, your, in your in your range, and you're really saying the, 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 there is a, there is a prefix in my in my in my range that is not fulfilling the predicate I give to the find first. And so um, seven actually have the border row. They essentially find the, the, the prefix. Um, and but five also are incremented to get the border afterwards, uh, and all the others are elements. Find if, similar story, right? It's, a, it's really just a variant of find. They are all elements roll here. Here we have three in the border roll, all others are element roll. Now we did lower bound. Um, so two of them actually are finding a border. Only two. 89 of them um, use the predicate afterwards to ensure that we have a single match, that we are doing really a binary search, and we want the element afterwards. We had this discussion in the morning here why the binary search only returns a bool, um, and it's not very practical. So here, we actually use it um, to find the single match. It's a, it's a binary search. Um, here, we actually find 19 um, to find the first match in, in that, that equal sequence. Okay, here, it's only one. We, we assert that it's really just one element. Upper bound, uh, 17 border roll. And none of them is used as is on, uh, for an element. Because, I mean, if you find the, the upper bound, what you, are, what you have after the upper bound is no longer the, 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 the quality, the property that you are you're looking for in this upper bound. It's, it's the end of the sequence of, of things that have that property. And so seven of them are actually decremented afterwards um, to get the element before. So I would claim iterator instances have distinct roles. You can say in the program, there's a border, there's an element, there's a border. And let's face it, iterators have always been ugly. You can dereference begin, you cannot dereference end, and you may, if you paint a picture, it's this skewed thing where the begin is here, but the end is like falling off of the, of the end. Now, if you would do elements and borders, you get, you get something that's nice and symmetric. You have the beginning and the end, and the, the begin is right here. That's, that's a border. The end is a border at the very end, and you have the elements in between. So, looks nice, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see where this goes. Um, okay, now, and then there is the end. And the meaning of the end depends on the role of the iterator or on the algorithm that you call. But if it's the algorithm that you call, the, the role of n depends whether this algorithm returns an element or a border. Find returns an element. So range's end is really a magic value to say, hmm, didn't find anything. If, if, if end is a border, it's clearly it's the border after all elements. Right? Now, What's ugly here is we have to mention range twice. I didn't, I didn't like that very much. Um, and it, it kind of hurts you when writing expressions on inline. Um, why can't we write this? Right? Why can't we just find and, and the iterator is, is a nullable? <clears throat> so this is where we ended up in Swift. So when you said uh, if, it's, uh, if it's a border, it's border after all the elements, oh, you know, really that's, that is true. I had a, a you know, I had a, a problem when I, was, when I was first thinking about this in Swift with the idea, so uh, our equivalent of find returns a, an optional, right? And, and if it doesn't find it, it returns it returns uh, uh, no, but the but I guess we have the the borders and the element uh, roles collapsed like iterators do, right? In in Swift, um, but I, I had a problem with the idea that that it should return this optional because uh, 
because there is a mathematical sense in which it makes sense that that it returns the end iterator. I guess that's the border interpretation. Um, right. So so um, here the, the comment is um, that in certain scenarios there is a end is really the right answer um, if you are not finding something. But I think what you are what you are basically saying it is the right. So that, that's my answer. Um, I think it is the right answer if you are really what you're doing is really a trim. So you are basically call, talking about the the, the the prefix of elements which are not which are not your element, which are not the, the, the first element you find. And if that's what you are looking for in in your um, in your in your program, and we will get that, get to that, um, then that's the right thing to do. You want end, right? Um, but if you are really looking for this one element. You want an optional, but it's it's depending depends on what you want, and uh, yeah. So so I said, well, let's introduce border and element concepts, right? And how would they look like? Now, the border is like like an iterator, but you cannot dereference it. And if it's not at begin, you have this element before and the element after. Um, now. The range begin and end are borders. That's pretty clear. That's the beginning of your, your world and the end of your world. Um, now, all the iterators that go into algorithms, as far as I've seen, are borders. We're always describing ranges, essentially. And ranges are described by borders. Um, it's the beginning or end of the input range. I would say all the output iterators are also borders. What you're really describing is is the, the border at the end of what, what you've already written. And then you just push that ahead. And, and, and the output iterator, conceptually, is, is, is that end where you're adding stuff. It's not the element you haven't written yet. There's no such element. Makes no sense. Um, the iterators that are returned from the algorithm, um, that depends on the algorithm. And I don't know if that's complete now with the latest C++ standard, but it's, it's, it's certainly a good, a good selection. Um, mismatch is the end of the matching prefix. Um, that, that's certainly that, that's a that's a border, right? These are all borders. Um, search is the beginning of the matching range, lower bound, upper bound, equal range. That's pretty clear. Partition point, that's pretty clear. We have a border. Um, unique, um, th that's also a, a, a border because that's the end of your compacted range. It compacted everything, and then said, here here's where I end. That's that, that's a border. Um, so the element concept is. They kind of live in between the borders, and they point at the elements. Um, and this thing can never be end. All right? What does that mean? Um, you, cannot, you cannot increment beyond the last element. And it has a border before and a border after. And there are a few elements which actually return There are a few algorithms which actually return elements. So that's fine. We've already looked at that. And min element, max element. Here we are also talking about the property of an element. And, and you're returning a, a, uh, an element. Now, you, you may want this. Um, it a, it's a looks a bit funky. Es essentially, what this is doing is it's turning the borders into elements. So the element here in old-fashioned C++ is still an iterator right there. You're really just saying, hey, I'm going to give you a range that, that has borders, but now I want the individual elements. And, and that for each enumerates elements is, is pretty natural. You want all the elements out. So, so that's where you, you get elements. Um, otherwise, if you wouldn't write kinds of elements, of course, you would, would get values. You would get the dereferenced ones uh, if you run for each. So you need some sort of utility to do this. Um, and I would suggest at least making elements nullable. There is an argument you maybe you wanted to have borders to be nullable as well, but it's, it's not appearing nearly as often as, as nullable elements. Um, and it's already compatible with pointers, right? So pointers are already nullable. So, um, so we, we basically, a pointer is an element. We, we want that. Um, and they are contextually convertible to bool. So you can write this if, auto it, find. Um, and you can reach the null state by value initialization. And, uh, and uh, the functions that return an element, they then return null instead of end. Now. Do I love nullable objects? No. I wish we had done it with Swift, like Swift, where you basically opt in to the nullability. 
um, as, an, as an optimization, you would still possibly be able to fold it into the same thing, so you don't, you, you don't get inefficiencies. But it would be awfully nice if we wouldn't have these some objects just being nullable by, by default. And then you have to kind of opt in and opt out. And, and it's, 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 a, it's an ugliness of C++ in, in my eyes. Go ahead. Random note on that. I know uh, Rust will optimize an optional reference into a null pointer. OK, so yeah, yeah, that's a comment is that the, uh, Rust optimizes an optional reference into a null pointer, which is Swift 2. OK, so would be nice, but unfortunately, you don't have it. Um, and the goal here is let, to let the programmer encode her intent. Um, so um, f I don't like find, because find doesn't tell you really. It, it, there's, there's too much, oh, OK, I find, and then assert not end. Or uh, assert uh, there is, there, I, I didn't find anything else. Or it, it would be nice if we could really say what we, what we mean in the, in the, in the code. And, and we did this in our library. Which, which is why counting these things was so easy for me, because I just had to go through these, these instances of, of these calls. Um, so there is a find unique that basically says you only want to find one, and you can assert that there's no other one. Um, you want, there's a find first, find last. And then there are the ones that are returning borders, trim left and right, which really are, are giving you a prefix, uh, or, the, the, or, or the, the, the range minus the prefix that doesn't fulfill the, 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 the predicate, or minus the suffix that doesn't fulfill some predicate. Are find, find first and find unique purely semantic? Yes. Okay. This is just an assert. But I think it's very nice to be able to write that, yeah, to actually to talk about this, these things. Um, and here's the same for lower bound. So we said, OK, there's, there's a binary find unique, there's a binary find first, find last, and, up, and at the end there's a lower bound, which is the old guy that gives you the border. And it's really you know, just, just asserts. Um, well, here not quite, but here it's like upper bound minus one. Yeah. It's just variation of the same thing. It's just so that you can basically encode your intent in the program. Um, and if some, if for some case, for some reason you don't get what you what you want, then you can always kind of you know go border before, border after, and, and patch it kind of. Um, and and there it is. The unique functions are just insert. So. Now we can do this, right? We can write it, find unique. Uh, and, and you want to mention the range only once. Now, again, we want to let the programmer write intent. Um, so what we added is a, a template parameter to these, um, to these functions that control the return value, that control. And, and Boost has that, actually. Um, in the, um, and we, we kind of stole it from Boost and, and refined it a little bit. So, Here's the algorithms are returning in the border, right? So you have the lower bound that returns the border. But actually, it's quite practical to say, hey, there's lower bound. Now, return me the take. Return me a view that, that ends with that border that you're returning, or that starts with a border that you're returning. That's return drop. Um, now, there's also the, the built-in go to the element before, which go to the element after which is here, um, which is a little bit redundant with a binary search. I mean, I would, I would still prefer writing binary search. But you have these things where if you have a border, um, you, can, you can already specify, hey, don't give me the border. Give me the element before. Give me the element after. Um, now, here, it's, it's for algorithms returning elements, it's, it's quite similar. Um, you have the find first or find unique. And you can say return element or null. But very frequently, you probably have an assert in there that says, yeah, I don't really want the null, right? And then you can just write return element. I don't want the null. Um, and you can have return the border before and after. And, and then you have to basically specify, which also proved to be nice, uh, what, what happens if you don't find that element? What do you get back? You can say you want the begin back and the end back. It seems like it's, this, is, this is quite a zoo of things that you have here. But there are only so many of them. We have like, I don't know, 28 or something. And that's it. Then we have, we, we, and in the implementation, of course, we kind of puzzle them together, um, you know, because they are not. And y could you write this in a different way, like more parametrically? Uh, I guess you could. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's only, it's only like 28 or 30 or something like that. So it's a, it's a handful of numbers. It's, it's, it's a handful. Uh, but, but then you're done with, with all these things. You've, you've gone through all the combinations that are sensible. I'm not worried about the effort for the library. 
know, this is, looks pretty complicated. I'm worried about the, you know, complexity it might introduce into code that uses it, <coughs> and also the complexity for the person who's trying to use this API to have to choose through all these different combinations. So I'm asking you, what's your experience of that? Um, so, what, so what's the experience with, with having basically to choose all, through all these combinations? I mean, um, it, it, I think that the, the, the genesis of this thing was the other way around. We, we didn't have them to begin with. And then in the program, we, we way too often had to write, you know, oh, range begin, and then we, we create, a, you know, a view, or we, we, we do a take of the range, and then we do a lower bound of the range, and, and then we combine this all, and then we have our suffix or prefix or whatever. And, and, and from that standpoint, we came and say, how can we, this happens too often, we, we should be able to write more expressive code, uh, inlineable code, we only have to mention the ranged ones. And, and that's, that's really how we, how we came up with this stuff. So this was from, from pain, having to repeat ourselves too much. And, and, um, and, and that, yeah, so it is, I, I think it is practical and it, and it follows a very stringent um, nomenclature. So you always have return and then it's, it's basically what's returned in the, in the success case and then there is potentially the or and what does it hap what happens in the, in the, in the, in the, in the null case essentially. So it always follows that pattern. You can write them all in that pattern and, 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 and I think it's, once you get the, the general structure you basically you don't have to like go through a list of 28 things. Do I do, do I have what I what I find? You basically simply just write what you mean, and and then it's supposed to be there. If it's not there, someone forgot to implement it. Um, okay. Now um, this is how this is implemented. Um, you essentially just have a template that has two variations. There's either the the pack element or the pack no element, and you, it, it passes in the iterator um, or actually the element you know, that that you found. And the range again, and then it, it it has to basically puzzle these thing, two things together and return what 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 the user specified. Um, and and these things always have a common return value, so it's, it's one return value. So so if you pack no element and you take the whole range, then it's still a TC take, so you get a compatible um, compatible type. Okay, and I'm already coming to the end. Um, so the iterator is, is modeled after pointers. Uh, so I, I think it's a, it's a low-level concept. Um, it, it certainly is, is, by its specification, correct. I'm just questioning whether it's, it's, it's useful. Uh, I think element and border have stronger semantics. Um, that I, I think the meaning is already in the programmer's head when, it's writing, when, when she's writing the code. So there's no real reason not to express it in the code. Um, and it's, for some range functions, it's necessary for, for correctness. That said, we didn't go all the way. So we have in our range library, we have nullable elements, we have all these uh, algorithm refinements and, and return specifications. Um, we, are, we are not, the, 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 the border, uh, the, um, the non-nullable border is still an iterator type-wise. We didn't wrap everything yet. Um, so we don't, and and we, there still can be accidental conversions from element to border. So we're still having a little bit of way to go in order really to tease these concepts apart. Um, but but we, we basically pretend already in the code that, that, we, that we have it and, and write our code accordingly. So doing a code review, it's, it's, what is that? Is it an element or a border? It's like, okay, you can answer this question, good. Should we apply first? Uh, yeah, so, so <laughs> and, and this is the cheap plug for us. Yes, we are recruiting. All right, thank you. So, Matt? Yeah. So, uh, I, I want to thank you for doing generic programming. So that's the first thing. I, I think this is like a, a rare search for, for the truth, um, which Try and reveal the, the reality underneath things, and, and you know that's something that people seldom pursue. So thanks for doing that. I think the. Um, I, I can. I mean, just to interject, interject. So I think I can absolutely agree. I mean, the, the that that this is a search for truth. 
This is not an, a you build something, but this is a how do we think? How should programs be written? This is canonical. This is a discovery process, as, as, some, as I think you said. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this is, and, and I, we feel that, that, that designing the library is exactly that process. And we often have to refine things and say, oh, no, this is not, this is not quite right yet. And then we have to change it. And, and, hopefully, and, and, and luckily, we have one guy uh, full time who's doing nothing else but refactoring. Um, and, and so we are really free. To, you know, we have the library, and we, but we also have our code, um, and, and we are really free to change stuff in the library and then say, okay, now we have to put this concept into the million lines of code. Go for it. Um, and that, that's, a very, that's, that's very good. That's very luxurious that we have that. Um, and and, and that's, I, I think this is, this is quintessential for getting a good quality library. So, so, you, yeah. so yeah, thanks. Um, uh, so, the, uh, so I've been thinking about this kind of problem for many, many years. Uh, and afterwards, I'd like to show you some a thread from the Swift forums where I think this this exact issue tripped me up. In like I I wrote three wrong answers before I before I settled on the correct answer, and and it was and I, I believe it was a border element uh, confusion issue. Um, that said, uh, I don't remember exactly which year, but I was going to mention this in my talk if I ever got to it. Andrea Alexandrescu s stood on this stage and actually suggested that we don't need positions at all in the mm -hmm. in the abstraction model for generic programming that we then. If you only have ranges. Yeah, that's the way he phrased it, and and. As I've been, you know, I didn't have the courage to do that in the Swift standard library. I still represented positions. We did it with indexes and not the referenceable iterators, so be safe in value semantics and all. But, <clears throat> but yeah, um, but I'm beginning to think that that he was right, and and as I look at it, you know, I, I think you've discovered a truth, but I'm not sure it's a truth that we need to reveal. Like because the complexity of the system is that's you know given to the the end user is now is now growing, and I think Andre's model provides a workable and simpler model. So you know I obviously I haven't worked it through. I haven't you know I have to try it like you did with your own million lines of code, right? Um, but uh, but I'm beginning to expect suspect that there's a that there's a simpler answer to all of this. Right, so the, the, so the comment was uh, um, that there may be a simpler answer um, to, these, uh, to this problem, um, that the problem is real, but there, there may be a simpler answer, um, talking, not talking about individual positions at all, but talking about ranges. And, and I, think, um, I think in D, they, they kind of pursued that. I, I'm, I'm not, I, I, yes, it, it's possible. I'm not familiar. I mean, the, 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 the thing, I didn't think there's still the truth that, that people think in terms of positions. I mean, maybe there is mathematically, you could, I, and, I, and I haven't looked at how he's doing various things. I mean, I, I'm I by no started, means, I started to do by, by no means I, I can say, maybe if I look at it, maybe then, then yes, it's, it's, it's good. I, I, there is still the, the the, the fundamental, I, I think there's still the fundamental desire to speak in the language of, of, of the developer and how the developer thinks. And I think if you, if, if, that is still, if you're doing a find or if you're doing a binary search, you're, in your mind, you're still saying, that's the element I'm talking about. Maybe you can express that in a different way that is more, that, that flows more elegantly in the code. I, I, it, it's possible. Um, it, and yeah, I, I would have, yeah, we'd have to look at it, really. Yeah, great talk, thank you. Uh, you convinced me to buy. And um, my question is, <laughs> so you basically you have this multiplication of types or concepts of things. Why stop there? Why not introduce also a left border and a right border? Uh, Why not having a left border and a right border? Yeah, um, because, because I think, I think, because I think there. So the question is, why don't we have a concept of a left border and a right border? Because I think there is just a co one concept border. I mean, the border could be anywhere. I think, I think it's not. A, I think it's not a type. 
Um, no, actually, um, I, I, don't, I don't think that borders are left and right. I think borders are, you have situations where you have five in a single range. You know, say there are, you, you take apart a, an earl, right? So you have the different, different parts of the earl, and then you have probably five different iterators that are pointing into different parts of that string. So you can't really say, is that a left border or is that a right border? It's a border. And, I, maybe, may, if you could, so, so maybe you could also have a middle border, um, and a middle border and a left border and a right border. Um, I, I'm, right I'm not right sure right this, right right I, I'm not sure it's helpful. Okay. I, mean, that, that's the, I mean, all these things have to be decided basically heuristically, right? It doesn't help. Does it, does it, write, does it me, make us write nice programs? And, 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 and there, I'm, I don't know, I, I would probably say no. What, what is that? Yeah, but when that happens when you move this thing, and then, then... Right, yeah, good, good point, good point, good point. I mean, then, then essentially a range uh, that has, a range that has, is, is empty, has begin and end lying on top of each other, and, and, and what, what kind of, prop, what are they? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I think in the program, I would like to do things pointing at the same place be kind of the same type. I mean, at least, it, we, we never felt the need to do that. Let me put it this way. Okay, yeah. You, you, you keep searching for borders. Why, why can't you express that? I mean, you can, you can still iterate a border. You can still move the border around and then talk about the element after the border. If you... Yeah, but, but I, I don't have border in standard. I, the people don't, don't think like this way. So every time I have to write a loop and put my logic in the loop. But if we have border as we value, then I can say, hey, here, this algorithm is a border generation. Well, I mean, what, what, what we do quite often is that if you, if instead of writing loops, we actually, looping, looping over iterators, we, we loop over the, the suffix. So you just shrink the suffix, you eat away your, your, your input, and, 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 and at any point in, in the, in the, during the iteration, you are really deal with, with the range. Um, and, and you don't always have the iterator, and then every time you use it, you have to put it together with iterator and end. That, that'd be kind of ugly. So you, you start off with, with the whole range, and then you eat away the whole range. Um, so th that's, that's quite common. And if you, have, if you have algorithms that are able, like the ones that are, you know, with the annotation, that are able to actually output um, the, the, the suffix, the, the new suffix, you can, you can kind of run these algorithms in your loop. And, and every, you, you stick in a range, and you get a range back, and you stick in a range, and you get a range back. So you're, and, and that way you kind of eat away your, your original input range uh, without ever mentioning positions. Exactly. So, so, so you can do that. Um, if, it's, if it's practical, and then, then you probably should do that if, if you don't have to talk about positions. If you use positions only to put them, and this is what this, this, uh, this return specification actually gets at, is if you use positions just to put together a range, just use a range to begin with, right? Don't, don't go to the positions in the first place. So you showed these 28 policy classes, and then you've got the find function template specialized over all 28 you know, semantics, adjust accordingly. Uh, like, what's the composability story? What are the other function templates on the left hand side? And do all of those operators? And so, so is that, does that compose? Yes, it does compose. Um, because simply what you're getting out is either an element, 
and then you can compose with anything that specifies what to do with an element. Or you are outputting a border, and then you compo compose it with anything that is processing a border. So you can compose it. You can mix and match, because you are, you're, getting, you're always operating on a range, and you get a border. Or you operate in a range, or you get an element. And then these two things are being put together, and, and you do something with it. And there's, there, are, there are things you can do with an element, and they are distinct from the things you can do with a border. You, you don't mix the two. And what are the other function templates that we provide in the lobby? All the algorithms. I mean, all the ones that are listed. Uh, min element, uh, uh, you know, mismatch, blah, 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 blah. You can, anything that really, I mean, th that, that we found useful, we just wrapped and, 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 and provided in our own library. Um, and, and some more algorithms as well. I think you had your own question. I, I, I think we never, I, I, I th okay, so I, I think we never, I mean, you're, you're, um, you're proposing the left and right border. Um, I, I think we never went through the algebra that how you would, you know, how would the func these functions look like and what would end up a left border and what would end up a right border and what would end up a middle border. And at the end, if you do all this exercise, is that really useful? That, that I, I think we, maybe you could, you could do that. I'm not, I'm not saying you, you can't. And, and then you would eva have to evaluate whether that's worth your while. Um, we just didn't do it. Uh, we just said borders are expressive enough, and so we stay with borders and elements. Yeah, I mean, all this is 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 all is all heuristic. You know, it's all it, it's all just based on what do we need and what makes our programming, what makes our life easier, what proves to be useful. I mean, I still think that this proves to be useful is a discovery process rather than an engineering process. But there's an underlying truth: what what's useful. Um, but but still, I mean, have you? And like, is that the final truth? <laughs> no, probably maybe not. Maybe I mean, you already mentioned that. So uh, yeah. So it's been bothering me a little bit to hear you talk about these things as elements, just in my brain. I mean, this is not actually a criticism. I'm just leaving somewhere. Um, it's been bothering me because they're they're really positions of elements. They're not the they're not the elements themselves. The elements have, have their values, but then it started to, I started to wonder how often you actually use them as positions of elements and wouldn't just as soon get a reference to the element out. Um, valid, valid point. So the question here is, um, how often is it useful to, so first of all, how often is it useful to actually get elements versus references? To the actual to the actual elements straight away. Um, yeah, you've got to phrase that differently because the element is the reference to the element. Okay, so Point first of all, way. okay, so okay, so first of all, we have we have the nomenclature problem, and I'm not a native English speaker, and I'm open to any nomenclature changes that that are proposed. So, is it right to call the element that I'm calling here element element, or should we call it something else, which is something a, a position? Well, but so is it is it is a position, or is the, is a position? Call it an index. No, but an index is a number. Is it? It's a position of an element. The way you're describing it, because you you can increment these things, right? How do you how do you how do you name them succinctly? And and if I'm if if you don't like element, right I'm open to any suggestions. For right now, just element iterator. Element iterator. Whatever. I mean, if someone has a different suggestion, I'll I'll try to adjust my speak accordingly. Um, but I I think we're trying to, you know, it's I have no strong, terribly strong opinion about how these things are supposed to be called. Um, so, so how how often is it useful to actually get a reference versus the iter versus the element? No, the reference versus the iterator. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. Uh, how, how, how do you want them to be? How do you want them to be called? How do you want them to be called? Tell me how you want them to be called. I call them like that. All right. Element position. Element position. Okay. Element position. Okay. So how often is it useful to get the element position versus a reference? Versus the element itself. A reference to the element, if that's what you. A, a, a reference to the element. Um, well, I mean, for some things you need the position. We do have. In, in that zoo of things, we also have return value, and we also have return reference. Um, th th there, there is. 
um, there, there, is a, the, 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 there is a challenge that, that w at least in, in our world, with Yota iterators, you have to keep the iterator alive um, in order for the reference to stay valid. I think in the standard, they did something else. I think they require a copy. Um, but um, we have, so, so in our case, we, you still have to do it, which is, which is kind of tricky because you are, we, we, we do manage, uh, but it's, it's, it's a bit tricky because you are, you're, once you pull the iterator and now you did reference it, you have to return the reference, but at the same time keep the iterator alive. And, and that's, uh, you, you, it, it can be done, but you have to kind of squirrel it away in some argument list um, so the iterator stays alive. Well, let me ask my question differently. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, I get the, I get the sense that your menagerie there can be simplified considerably without any loss to you. But I might be wrong. But suppose <clears throat> suppose you have uh, suppose you you just got the element out of the, of all the element versions in any place that you wanted to be able to iterate over following elements. That what you do is you ask for the position before the element. And then to get the element, to get the actual element position, you use element after. Like, could you do? Could you express everything you need to express with a smaller library that made you go through one more step in the rare? I'm assuming rare case that that after you find an element position that you want to continue looking at element positions after. There are other things you may want to do with element positions. I mean, you may want to remove them from a, from a collection. That's, that's going to be relatively frequent. Um, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I think there is not a... Um, then there is the nullable thing, right? Nullable is, 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 would, will be quite frequent. So you would have to introduce a, a, a nullable reference, in effect, which you, you could, but... If you do a find and you return the reference straight away, then then how what do you, how, how do you deal with a, with a, with a null case? I get it. Uh, I so so I mean for us the and, and we, because this is quite frequent um, the, the 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 nullable case um, is it, it didn't it, even if you're doing the the reference um, and you have a nullable reference I mean there's no it, when you program there is no real advantage of using a nullable reference a pointer effectively. Or an element position. Both you need to. You can both compare both to bool, and you have to dereference both. So you, you really could care less what what you do. Um, it, it's and 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 and, 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 and uh, there's another thing. Um, quite frequently, um, there is uh, the element is lazy. The element position. The element position is lazy. So when you dereference the element position, things happen. But you may not do that. Uh, and and if you if you if you dereference straight away, and and you get a reference, the reference will not be a reference but a value. So you may want to pass this thing around, and then you have a value at your hands, which may be okay because you can officially move it or whatever. But you know, you may not have you may not have to do this. So, so optional references should be something else than pointers because pointers can be incremented. And yes, I couldn't agree more. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Was there something else? Uh, yeah. Um, I want to add that
are elements in this sequence that is equivalent to a vector, right? So for this algorithm, given is this element or that element, Makes a these difference. two elements should not be distinguishable. But if we only have position, they are distinguishable. Mm -hmm. Well, well, I think it depends on what you want. So, so is, it, is it correct that you're basically having two positions which are distinct but may point to equivalent elements? And I, I think it, it, it depends on what you want. I mean, it's another case where references may not do the job unless you want to compare, you know, you start comparing the addresses of the elements, which is kind of weird, I think. Um, especially if you know that these things all live in one, in, 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 in one, in one array. Um, <laughs> There's, there's, one, um, there's one more thing that I wanted to uh, talk, say about the zoo of, of stuff we have. Um, it's a little bit the, the how, how, do we design, how do we design the library. It is always easier if you have a more high-level concept to go to a low-level concept. So, so if in doubt, we add to the zoo for our code. Because this later on leads us, to, can, we can always later say, hey, go through the code, file on these instances, and replace them with this, this one call with these two calls, for example. It's much harder to go the other way around. So, the, 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 once the, 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 so, so you start off with a higher level of abstraction, and to go to a lower level of abstraction is basically, you can always do by, by, by inlining. Um, but the other way around, you kind of have to find all the places where you actually can do that, where you can, where you can use that more high-level concept, uh, which, is a, which is a more complicated process. So that's why um, I, I wasn't so, when, when it came to like return value or return reference, um, I, I wasn't so, so hesitant to do it, um, simply because I knew that if, if we had a better idea later on, um, it, it would always be possible to go back, look at all these places, and, and, and then make a different decision. Um, it, but if, if people like, you know, work around that missing feature somehow, even if it's not in its final form, but then, then if, they, if they just put in a workaround, then later on you would always have to like, you know, undo this workaround. So better do something that is abstract that you say, well, it, it, it does the job in, in this particular situation and in more situations. It may not be the final incarnation that we want, it may not be the smartest way to do it, but at least we have you know, we, we, I always say we have the dirt in one corner. We, 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 we have this one thing that we, that we can use um, to solve this particular problem. Maybe that's not the final solution, and maybe it can com be combined with other solutions, and then you find something more elegant. But, but it's, a, it's, it's at least a start, and it's, it's better than nothing. I, I came up with the perfect name for your element of and I just realized <laughs> cell. Cell. Does, every, does everyone agree on cell? So. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's like your, it like works for your branding. <laughs> it's perfect. It's the, it's okay. the identity of a cell. Okay, yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you have to change the talk. <laughs> Just think cell. Yeah, say, yeah, think cell. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> You're very thankful. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Go ahead. So, so at the beginning of the talk, um, you showed some examples, and it kind of matches my, my experience at the time I really have to think carefully about what iterators do in terms of reverse iterators, right? How many examples of reverse iterators do you have in your code? And did your zoo or other abstractions make those easier to deal with? Um, is it still the case that when you reference a reverse iterator, you're swapping the before and after? Right. I mean, the, so so how how many cases of reverse iterators um, do we have, and how much does, does it really help? I mean, um, I I must say that um, that we have another abstraction. Um, so so we I would try to avoid them like a plague. Um, reverse iterators because they are terribly unelegant. Um, the we we do have another abstraction which are generator ranges, um, which which eliminates most of iterators anyway in the code base. So we had just have basically a reverse iteration basically baked in because you cannot express it with iterators. You just tell the range, give me your elements, but in reverse order. But if you're doing a reverse line. Yeah, then you have to do it, then, yes. Then there is still a find last, so you don't have to go find first and then you know but, squiggle around. But, but you'll do a before and after. They still swap sentences when you're reversing, right? Or do they you just have to know whether you're, what, what, what kind of range you're currently playing with. 
I mean, are they are they swapping are they swapping uh, before and after? Yes, they do. I mean, you have to basically know what you're looking at. Are you looking at the reverse range or have, are you looking at, a, at the original range? And and are reverse iterators terribly nice? No, they're not. Uh, but it, it's yeah, it's, it's what we have. And, and 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 the element. I mean, if we at least can call border base and uh, border base or element base, and and they do the right thing. So there, we don't have to think about it anymore. So if we do a find, we just do an element base. If you do a lower bound, you do a border base, and then and it's okay. So. And we also like limit, like disabled, of course, the borders and uh, the, the bases that don't make sense. Like in case of filter, you you don't have a border base. It's just not implemented. It doesn't compile. Anything else? Thank you very much, and...